after I got saved during the Jesus movement, I remember our youth minister bringing us over on a hot school bus and letting us off in the French Quarter with a handful of tracts and saying, don't come back until you've given them out, until you've talked to people about Jesus. And uh, I have vivid memories of sharing the gospel on the streets of New Orleans and uh, being rejected, being spit at, being cursed, but also finding people interested in hearing good news. And I pray that there'll be a move like that again. Surely, we want more than what we're seeing. What we have today is religion without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, and heaven without hell. And that is not what the Bible teaches. And on, on top of that, we've, we've confused revival and evangelism. And so churches have revival and say, well, we're not going to do revivals anymore because nobody got saved. The purpose of revival is to change the church and a changed church goes out and does evangelism. It begins with repentance in the church. In the 1970s, in Birmingham, Alabama, Woodlawn High School was the last high school to integrate. George Wallace was still preaching segregation now, segregation forever. Woodlawn integrated, and a young man named Tony Nathan went to that school and was one of the few African-American players on the football team. There were riots in the street, there were riots on the campus, there was fighting hatred. But Hank Irwin, who's a man that I've been privileged to get to know, was the chaplain of the Woodlawn High School football team. And in one FCA service, 44 out of 48 players came to faith in Christ in one night. 
And it revolutionized the campus. It jumped from Woodlawn High School to Banks High School. God began to move. There was a candle lighting service in Legion Field the night before a championship game. There were over 5,000 people at a candle lighting service. 42,000 people filled Legion Field to watch a high school championship game. And when the superintendent tried to stop them from praying before the game, 42,000 people stood and recited the Lord's Prayer without need of a microphone. And people in the stands proclaimed, nobody can stop us from talking to God. I want God to do it again. I saw it, I sensed it, and I never got over it. Although that little old lady down front wanted me to get over it, I don't wanna get over it. I wanna live long enough to see it happen again.